so good to see you, Chris. Good to good to catch up. It's been what about a year since we last talked. Congrats yeah. on the album and the tour. It's amazing. Good to see you guys. Thank you for talking to me again. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, anytime. So the music of the spheres tour. This is your first one in like six years. Yeah. And I know this is really important to you because Coldplay had said they didn't want to do a tour. You guys didn't want to do a tour until you had a way of making it more environmentally friendly. And I love the initiatives that you guys have taken. So can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, Raven. Yes, we uh, when we finished our last tour in the end of 2017, we felt like if we're going to go out again, it has to be cleaner because we use so much power and uh, it just it just consumes a lot to travel like that and do big shows and we we didn't realize how fun it would be to try and change that so what's happened in the interim is that so many people who have invented cool stuff have been in touch with us and now we have areas of the concert where you can generate power by jumping up and down on this bit or pedaling bikes on this bit or the concert itself is about to start running on biofuel batteries okay. and We've got some amazing partnerships with things outside the concert, like cleaning up oceans. And so it feels like, although there's still a long way to go, I think we feel slightly less guilty about being on tour. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible what you guys are doing. I saw the bikes and mm -hmm. the kinetic dance floor. Did, have you tried one of the bikes? Have you hopped on one yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have. It's good. good workout. <laughs> It is. I mean, the, the funny thing is, like, some people, I think, pedal for a lot of the show at the moment. And other people come on, you know, like my dad, for example, would do one song at a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's great. So it's, it's a really amazing feeling when you're pedaling or jumping and you know that it's making something turn on. Yeah, turning on a, a Coldplay concert. I mean, that's insane. I know. I mean, that's crazy. unreal. And, and the backdrop here in Philadelphia, you're going to be at the Lincoln Financial Field where the Eagles play. Are you watching yes. the Eagles games? I don't watch a lot of NFL. I think I'm at the age where I just respect anyone that does that. So I don't have a favorite team or anything because <laughs> they're all amazing. In my <laughs> mind. I took a peek at your set list too because I'm getting excited for June 8th. Like I, I can't wait to be there and uh, I'm so happy that you're playing some of the older music. I mean, you guys have been around for decades now and some of the songs off Parachutes. Yep. Um, I love when bands do that. There's some bands that won't play some some of the older stuff. Is that always going to be a part of the tour? Yeah. Well, the we, whole catalog? Yeah. We play all the songs that we really like. And so we, I think there's a certain relaxed uh, feeling around songs once they're 10 years old or something. You don't have to do anything other than think about whether you feel like playing it or not. There's no, I think when you're, when you're starting out, you're like, is this song doing okay? Or does anyone like this one? And after a while, it just becomes clear which are the ones we like. And often it's the same as people would like to listen. Mm. It's part of the fabric of Coldplay. Yeah. I was about to say, what is one of the songs where you know, even before you like strike the first chord, you know, people are just going to go insane. Well, I don't, that's a hard question to answer, Ray, right? So uh, I, I often feel that if we're doing a cover, because I have an extra confidence in someone else's songs. <laughs> so when, it's your own, when it's your own music, I feel there's always a mixture of extreme confidence and extreme insecurity at the same time. And, and see, like, I think people will like hearing a song like a Viva La Vida. We have a song called Viva La Vida or, I don't know, whatever song. But then there's always part of you that's, not sure you can't be a hundred percent sure well i wanted to ask you because you know you've written so much timeless music over the years music that we've already referenced from from yellow to sparks to shivers i mean uh, so much music that we'll be talking about for for years and years to come but i'm curious if there was a song that stuck out to you over the last five ten years so let's say and you're like man i wish i thought of that i wish i wrote that song i wish i was a part of it in some sense well i, I feel very lucky that i always have one or two other people's songs where I get that kind of initial rush of, it's a sort of jealousy at first, like, yeah. oh man. But that's just my body telling me that I really think it's great. So yeah. Harry Styles' song, As It Was, would be the last example where you're like, oh man, that's really great. And then, uh, then um, just, there's just so many. 
I'm trying to think of some others that happened recently, but it happens a lot. And I've become, oh yeah, the super bass by Nicki Minaj I heard the other day. <laughs> oh, man, that's amazing. I want to I hear you rap that first verse to super bass. Come on, that could, that could have been you. But I feel very lucky that I still fall in love with other people's music all the time. And that's a, it's a great inspirer. Yeah, that jealousy turns into inspiration. Yeah, very um, quickly, fortunately. And it's and it's a beautiful thing. It's got to be a really cool feeling to uh, performing your new songs for the first time live because Music of the Spheres is a really new album. It came out just in October. So what album, uh, what what song from that album are you most excited to, or do you like performing live? Because I know you've had some shows already. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I we did a song with BTS called My Universe, which I really like singing a lot. There's a, a few a few of them. I get embarrassed to talk about, but I guess that's my job. <laughs> yeah. this Funny. We, we start the show with a song called Higher Power, which feels like a good, <clears throat> a good opener. So yeah, I don't know, all of them at the moment. Yeah. But I would, I would, I, they're all sort of nested between lots of old songs, so. They're, they're all kind of protected. I like uh, Let Somebody Go with Selena Gomez. Uh, yeah. I think that was a, a special one. What was it like teaming up with Selena Gomez? Well, Selena's amazing. And um, often when we do a collaboration, it's because we really love that person's voice and songs for a while. And she was a case in point where ever since I heard a song first called Good For You, where, however long ago that was, I was like, that, that is such a beautiful voice. And so it just came about that the right song came along and then we asked her and she was really sweet and kind and did it. And um, yeah. Yeah, such a fan of hers as well. Uh, the, the song is incredible. I, I'm just curious because this is a world tour. You're, you're going literally everywhere. Uh, is is there staples on the on the road that you need to feel like home? You know what I mean? You're, you're city to city, country to country. Are, are there things that make you feel comfortable on the road? Uh, kind of. Uh, Bennett, but not, 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 nothing crazy. I, I feel pretty at home most places on earth. I'm very lucky. There are some countries we aren't allowed to go to or can't go to, but apart from that, we're very privileged that we're able to move around with relative freedoms. It's not to be taken for granted. And so as long as we're on earth, I feel pretty at home. <laughs> That's good. Any, any pre-show rituals, anything that you need to do before I know some people uh, get really crazy before. Also, I've seen people that listen to like classical music and kind of like zone out beforehand. Do you do anything wacky before? It's similar for you guys on radio. I mean, I'm nearly 90 years old, so I have a lot of stretching to do, stuff like that. Imagine it's, it's like being a, a very old cheerleader, you know? <laughs> Stop it. So, whatever you imagine is probably what I do. No, you're very agile. I've seen you jump <laughs> around the stage. You you get pretty high. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I always tell people, like, you have to see Coldplay at least once in your life. I've been fortunate enough to see you so many times over the years, from MSG to uh, here in Philadelphia. Uh, I was just curious if there was ever a band or an artist that you wish that you, that you saw that you didn't get a chance to see, that you're like, man, you're kicking yourself. Like, oh, I should have saw them when they were touring. I mean, of course. Shh. The Beatles, of course, and mm. um, Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac, and I mean, you have a whole list. Yeah, a whole list. Chopin, he was a bit older, of course. Mm. Beethoven, th yeah. those kind of people. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, you go way back. <laughs> but like, when you have the chance to see a band like Coldplay, you have to take the opportunity. Yes. And and where better than Lincoln Financial Field? This is such a beautiful venue, and right there in South Philadelphia, June eighth. We cannot wait. I mean, you don't have to, but you're no, you to have to. to. I, it's, I'm demanding. Yeah. But it's going to demand everybody be there. So it's, it's going to be a big party. I, I feel grateful for anyone that comes and we give it everything we have. So that's, that's all we can do. Well, you do absolutely that. Uh, congrats on this tour. Congrats on the album. Uh, we, we can't wait to see you. Guys. Hey, I'm really happy to speak to you and I'll see you soon, I hope. Yes. Sounds great, Chris. June. Okay. Talk soon. Bye. All right. Bye.